Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about empirical formula and molecular formula. <coughs> so in chemistry, there are a lot of formulas. So aside from empirical and molecular, we have the structural and the condensed formula. But in this video, we're just going to talk about the empirical formula and the molecular formula. So empirical formula shows the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. Molecular formula shows the number of each type of atom in the molecule. Here, we're going to talk about how to calculate empirical formula when given a mass data. We're also going to talk about empirical formula when given a percent composition data. So here are the steps in determining the empirical formula. So first, start with the number of grams of each element. Remember, if percentages are given, you have to assume that the total mass of the compound is 100. In this way, the percentages will become grams. So just convert the percentage to grams. Next, convert the mass of each element to their moles. We do this by dividing it to the molar mass. Next, divide each mole by the smallest number of moles calculated. So look for the smallest quotient. Then round to the nearest whole number. Let me put it in a language you can understand. Okay, so let's start with empirical formula given a mass data. Sample problem number one. A sample of copper metal weighing 2.50 grams is heated to form an oxide of copper. The final mass of the oxide is 3.13 grams. Determine the empirical formula of the oxide. So the first step is to determine the mass. So we have copper, Cu, with 2.50 grams. And we have the oxide with 3.13 grams. Okay, so remember, the 3.13 is the mass of the oxide. Now we have to get the mass of oxygen. So how do we do that? So we get the mass of oxygen by subtracting the final mass of oxide, 3.13, with 2.50 grams. So this will give us 0.63 grams of oxygen. Now we have copper and oxygen. We will get the molar mass of each atom. So for Cu, 2.50 grams divided by the molar mass of copper, which is 63 0.546 grams per mole. Cancel grams. We will get 0 0.039 moles. So for oxygen, we have 0 0.63 grams of oxygen divided by 16.0 grams per mole. Cancel grams. We will get 0 0.039375 moles. So now you have to divide this moles by the smallest number of moles. So this will be your smallest number. 0 0.03934 moles divided by 0 0.03934 moles. This one will give us 1. This one will give us 1.00 something. So this quotient will be the number of atoms. So Cu. 1 and oxygen 1 and we all know that we don't write the number 1 as subscript so the final answer will be cuo magic okay so let's have another example on analysis a compound with molar mass 60 grams per mole was found to contain 12.0 grams of carbon 2.0 grams of hydrogen and 16 grams of oxygen. What is the molecular formula of the compound? So the first step is to start with the given. So we have 12 grams of carbon, 2 grams of hydrogen, and 16 grams of oxygen. Now these three are the most common atoms used in problems like this. So you have to memorize the molecular mass of each atom. So how do we get the moles? We divide it by the molar mass so 12.01 grams per mole we will have one mole of carbon divided by 1 point gram um, so we will have 
two moles of hydrogen and let's divide this by 16 grams per mole since oxygen has a molecular mass of 16 grams per mole so we will have one mole of oxygen so this will be your empirical formula c h 2 o now we are asked to get the molecular formula of the compound so how will we do that first get the molecular weight of this empirical formula okay so c h o we have one atom of carbon times the molecular mass 12 we we'll have 12 we have two moles of hydrogen atoms so we will get so two times one we will have two then we have one mole of oxygen atom times 16 we have 16 this will result to 30 grams per mole so remember we have 60 grams per mole as our mass the mass of the unknown compound right so what we need to do is to divide this 60 grams per mole by the molecular weight of our empirical formula which is 30 this will give us 2 now this 2 so this 2 will be used in getting the molecular formula how you have to multiply your empirical formula by 2 this will give us C2H4O2 so this is your molecular formula Okay, so next problem. A compound made of two elements, iridium and oxygen, was produced in a lab by heating iridium while exposed to air. The following data was collected. So we have the mass of crucible, 38.26. Mass of crucible and iridium, 39.52. Mass of crucible and iridium oxide, 39.73. Now, to get the mass of iridium, we have to subtract 39. 52 grams with 38.26 grams why this is to cancel the mass of the crucible so this will give us 1.26 grams to get the mass of oxygen we have to subtract the mass of crucible and iridium oxide from mass of crucible and iridium okay not with the mass of crucible okay so we will get 39.73 grams minus 39.52 grams this will give us 0 0.21 grams why this and this this is because iridium oxide is present here you have to cancel the mass of crucible and iridium so this one and this one after getting the mass of iridium and oxygen we have to get the number of moles so again this is by dividing it to its molecular mass so iridium has 192.217 grams per mole this will give us 0 0.006555 moles of iridium now oxygen has 16 so this will give us 0 0.013125 moles right now we have to look for the smallest number of moles what is the smallest this one so divide it by itself zero zero six five five one this one zero point zero zero six five 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 one this will give us one this will give us two now the empirical formula will be i r o so, sir, question, can we get the molecular formula for this number? I would say no since the mass of the unknown compound is not given. So remember, to get the molecular formula, we have to get the molecular weight of this, then divide it to the mass of the unknown. So let us now calculate empirical formula when given a percent composition data. So based from the word percent, you will see percentage here so number one a compound is found to contain 50.05 percent sulfur and 49.95 percent oxygen by weight 
what is the empirical formula for this compound. Then, calculate the molecular formula when the molecular weight for this compound is 64.07 grams per mole. So the first step when given a percentage, assume the 100% grams of compound. Okay, so S will become 50.05 grams and oxygen will be 49.95 grams. If you add this, this will give you 100. Okay. So now we have to convert this to moles. So for S, we have 50.05 grams divided by, check your periodic table, it is 32.066 grams per mole, which will give us 1.5608 moles. For oxygen, we have 49.95 grams divided by 16, again memorize the 16, which will give us 3.1212 moles. Now the next step, yes, correct, you have to divide it to the smallest number of moles calculated. So 1.5608 mole, 1.5608 mole. This will give us 1, this will give us 2. So the empirical formula will be SO2Y because the quotient here is 2, so your oxygen will become 2 okay s is 1 so you have 1 so take note again you don't write this so what is the next step the molecular formula right so again you have to get the molecular weight of your empirical formula so we call this the empirical formula weight efw so since we have 1 sulfur Multiply it to 32.06. We will get 32.06. We have two moles of oxygen atoms. Divide, um, multiply it to 16. You will get 32. Add them. You will get 64 grams per mole. Now, the next step is to divide this to the given molecular weight of the unknown. So 64.07 grams per mole divided by 64.0 grams per mole will have 1. So what does it mean? It means that the molecular formula and the empirical formula are the same. Your EF and your MF. Okay, so sample problem number 2. Ammonia reacts with phosphoric acid to form a compound that contains 28.2% nitrogen, 20.8% phosphorus, 8.1% hydrogen, and 42.9% oxygen. Calculate the empirical formula of this compound. So again, we start with converting the percentage to grams. So we have nitrogen. 28.2 yeah, Phosphorus P 20.8 I'm oh, sorry, this is grams, grams For hydrogen, we have 8.1 grams And for oxygen, we have the 42.9 grams Now, converting them to moles We will get 2 moles of nitrogen 0.67 moles of phosphorus we will also get 8 moles of hydrogen and 2.68 moles of oxygen. So the next step is to divide the smallest number of moles. So we have 0 0.67 as the smallest. So 2 divided by 0 0.67. This will give us 3. 3 nitrogen, for phosphorus we have 1, for hydrogen we have 12, for oxygen we have 4. So combining this, we will get N3H12PO4. Now applying what you have learned in nomenclature, you know that PO4 is a polyatomic ion. And you can also get this the sim in simplest term. 
So we will get N H three four. No sorry. N H four three P O four. So the name of this will be ammonium phosphate. Okay, so last problem. A compound contains 57.54% carbon, 3.45% hydrogen, and 39.01% fluorine. What is its empirical formula? Okay, so let's make it fast. Thank God. The first step is to get the mass, then the moles. So for carbon, we have C. 57.44 grams, uh, 54 grams, divided by 12.01, it's carbon's molecular mass, we will get 4.791. So for hydrogen, we have 3.45 grams, divided by 1 gram per mole, we will get 34.42. So hydrogen is 1.00. Zero, 0.8 so basically 8 is insignificant then for fluorine we have 39.01 grams divided by 19 we will have 2.053 moles now the next step is to divide it by the smallest number of moles so divide this by 0 0.53 moles We will get 2.33, 1.67. Okay, so sir, question. We have decimal numbers. There's no whole number. So what are we going to do? So the key here, the key here is to see that 2.33 is equal to 2 and 1 third or 7 thirds. And 1.67 is 5 thirds, right? What we need to do is to multiply them by 3. So 7 thirds times 3 will have 7. 5 thirds times 3 will have 5. And 1 times 3 equals 3. So don't forget 1. Even though it's not a fraction, you have to multiply everything by 3. Therefore, the empirical formula will be C seven H five F three. So what is the name of this compound? So the name of this compound is benzo trifluoride. Okay, so don't worry we haven't studied this. We will study this in organic chemistry part. Okay, so that's all.